All right, so now we're gonna add the base to the three-bladed impeller that we've got here. So again, we're gonna go back and use practice using these tools some more. The circle tool, select that. I'm gonna hover near the middle so it'll snap to that surface. Hover on the edge and then slide in and it should snap to the surface, there we go. All right, and so and this is gonna be, uh, um, let's see, 730 seconds of an inch. So I clicked once stretched it the direction I want it to go and 7 divided by 32, hit enter, there's the surface. And let's put one more circle in here too. We need to put the this, I match the one that's already here, that one right there. So now if I use the select tool, you can see there's one circle and then there's the outer circle. So we don't actually need the inner one, so I'm going to select that surface and hit delete. You can see that brings through the color from the previous base. And now another way to, you'll, you can see that we on the outer edge here, this is choppy. We can modify the properties of this. Um, I've selected it, and if I go over to uh, Model Info, it gives me the chance. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's do it another way. I'm going to close that. Sorry, that new menu system is unfamiliar to me. I'm going to right click on this and do Entity Info. That's the one I was looking for. And here it says 24. I'm going to go ahead and put 60 in there. And it makes that circle looks nice and smooth. Again, that's entity info. And so that happens to be um, the three, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. where is that entity info? The very top one here is entity info. So I'm going to close that menu. So now we're back to this. Um, so our first step here is I'm going to, sorry, get rid of this. Uh, we need to push pull tools because we need this to come stand up for us. So I'm going to grab that surface with the push pull tool. Click once and stretch it until it, uh, it's 1 and 17 uh, 64 of an inch. So 1 space 17 divided by 64 and hit enter. And if we back up here, you'll see that created something that looks a little bit similar to our previous work. Um, uh, I'm, we're going to need this surface here, so I'm going to take the line tool like we did on our previous one and add and restore some of this surface here and then select my line, get rid of it, oops, there we go, and then add the color, a color that we want, so I'm just going to pick another color like this one here, all right, so now I can go back to my select tool, and we've got this to work with, all right, so now we need to make, uh, we're using small, instead of a circular magnet like shown on the original there, we're going to use slots for uh, small thin magnets and so we need to add some construction lines and we can use that using our measure tools. So go down third from the bottom on the left, select that and choose the um, tape measure. What I'd like to do is, oh actually not the tape measure, excuse me, do, 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 do. it's the protractor again. I want some uh, lines. So I'm going to hover near the edge, snap to the middle, and line up with the red and rotate around to the green and then do the same activity again only line up with the green and rotate around to the red and all this does is transfer our axis up so we can make use of it all right so we need to use the offset tool where we uh, created lines that were parallel to others and so let's go up there and that's under the push pull tool and we're gonna uh, excuse me construction line uh, tape measure is needed now so we're going to go in here and we're going to offset these. We're going to have slots on the top of this and one of them can be an uh, we need to be an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to hover at the edge here. Don't hover near the center and just go near the edge and pull it off to one side and then type in uh, one eighth of an inch. So one eighth, uh, one eighth of an inch, enter, and then we'll go one eighth the other direction, one divided by eight. And then those slots won't bite quite be wide enough because we're using a quarter of an inch. Uh, we need it actually a little bit wider. So I'm going to move this uh, 17 one twenty-eighths. That's just a hair more than an eighth of an inch. So we're going to do that the same thing going the other way. 17 divided by 128. And so now the piece we want to make slots in is this piece here because it's wider. So let's use our line tool. Zoom in, hover at the intersection here, and hover at that intersection. This one, zoom in over here so we can get close and hover at that one. So that's that surface. Let's go do the same thing on the other side over there. Oops, zoomed past it. Uh, again, we're gonna 
hover. Hover at those intersections, hover at this one, and then finally zoom in so I make sure we get this one right. Good. All right, so now let's go ahead and paint those two while we're here. I'm going to choose a different color here. Let's go to the paint tool. Let's hit it with um, a gray or something. And this surface and this surface, well, the ones we'll be drawing down. So now we need these slots drawn down three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to use the push pull tool. Select that surface and take it down uh, three quarters of an inch. So uh, three divided by four. All right, so we need to do the other one rather than rotate around. Here's another trick we can use. I select it and it slides up and down with me, but if I take it down and rest on this surface and then select, then you'll see that it matched it. All right, so let's do a little cleanup, a couple more things to do here. I'm gonna highlight these construction lines we made and get rid of those, just dragging a box over them. Don't miss that one, there we go. Um, this surface we don't need because we want the uh, to be able to slide onto the rod that it fits onto. And you can check, yep, the surface, well, it doesn't go all the way through yet because we still need to remove something. But we got one more thing to do here. So we made a group of the base. Now let's make a group of the top without having to include it yet. So let's, um, there's that. We'll right click on this and make a base, group it. And then the last thing I want to do here is select all of that and group it. Okay, make this group. Okay, so, but this is a great way for me to show you when you need to edit something after it's grouped what you need to do. So we know that we left a surface in there. From the other side it views as red, but we need to get rid of that surface. And so um, let's double click on the whole thing and you can see that allows me to select either this surface either this group or that group but we need to edit this one so I'll double click on it rotate it around and select that surface and you can see now it goes all the way through let's click anywhere else outside the box and now that piece you can see all the way through and it's set up to go and as you can see it's got similarities with the other one uh, the magnets that we're using are inexpensive but strong so they should match the abilities of this magnet to follow the rotating magnetic field and so that is the completed part now one last thing to do here let's save this one tricky thing about the um, uh, web version of SketchUp is you when you go to export the file to 3d print it will only export the whole file so we really don't want this one I'm gonna save this uh, actually, yeah, do, do, do. let me back up here. Sorry, I did the wrong thing. Let's do a file here, save as, and um, you should use another name. I'm just going to put a dash two on this for now and save it. So it was already saved while I was working on it, but now I've got a new one, and what I need to do is select the other one and delete it. Now, this allows me, when I go to export uh, the file, I can work. So you can um, send me either file with your submission. The last thing we're going to do is take this part and export it as an STL. So file, export, STL, and uh, it's going to save the file to wherever you do download. So I'm going to click save and then go to my downloads area and that's the file you want to go find and attach to your submission along with the SketchUp file. Okay, so let's talk about that for just a second. So the SketchUp file, um, you want to export your SketchUp file. Um, do, 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 save as, export. Let's go to uh, download your SketchUp file right here. And then you can, whichever version you use will be fine. 2018, I think is what I'm using. Most of you, may, uh, the browser defaults to this. So then you can click OK there and it's going to save your file so you can submit it. All right, so that brings us to the end. For those using Chromebooks or would prefer to use a web browser, uh, this is how you do it. The two files that get downloaded need to be submitted with your proper naming characteristics and all that. Again, nice work, everyone. Uh, bring this to class. We'll start playing with these and putting in your own impeller designs on the bottom of these. See you in class.